Hey y'all, and welcome back to another episode of TC Teaches. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a basic treasure chest like something you'd see on your screen right here. All right, but I'm going to go ahead and move this off to the left for a second, and we'll start again with a new object. So I'll hit Shift A and add in a cube. Now with that cube added in, uh, I want to set the pivot point as the first thing that I do. So I'm going to switch into edit mode real quick and then move the mesh so that the pivot point is at the very bottom here. So we'll just move this along and it moves incrementally because I have snapping turned on and I have it set to increment with the absolute grid snap on. Just something to keep in mind. It won't necessarily do that if you just try to eyeball it. And then I'm going to use uh, pretty specific measurements on this just so we can get this back. I think it's a great thing to use the specific dimension measurements, especially if you come from a more uh, technical drafting background than just a design background. So if I grab this bottom here, I can see that the dimensions are 3, 2, and 1.8. So I'm going to actually do that, and I'm going to hit 3, and then we'll leave this at 2, and then instead of 1.8, I'm going to mark this as 1.7, because what I'm going to do to get that last point 1 is I'm going to extrude off this base edge right here to get us that extra little point 0.1 uh, meters there. All right, so now we have our basic shape. Let's switch to the modeling workspace and get to work. Now, the way we're going to do this is we're just going to grab our loop cut tool, and I'm going to pop one in the middle and one on each side. Now, the one in the middle is going to handle uh, just kind of some offset for these additional loops here. And the one's on the middle over in this direction. So if actually, if we were just to grab this edge loop just to show you, these two edge loops are going to be the outside marking here. All right, so we've done that, and then what I want to do, we're also going to grab the loop cut tool again and pop one here in the middle, and then I'm going to specify where these need to go. So I'm going to, I'm going to press this slide and then come down here to the factor for the operator panel and type negative 0.5. Do the same thing on this side, except instead of negative 0.5, just positive 0.5. Well, actually, it looks like negative 0.5 is what's needed as well. All right, so that's given me basically everything I need. And then we'll add in the extra little piece here. And to do that, I think this just needs to be 0.5. Nope, I guess it's negative 0.5. And then one on this side as well. And this apparently is 0.5. So there we go. All right, and then maybe we can add in one here for 0.5 and just try to keep these widths of all of our pieces the same. So what I've done is just put in the loop cuts for the extra little sections that we're going to have, and I'm gonna switch back to the select tool, grab these bottom faces, and then extrude region. I'm just gonna extrude and then change that to a point. Ah, okay, it's snapping. Snapping is turned on. That's a problem here. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just turn off snapping, grab these faces one more time, because it was trying to snap to the ultimate grid length, and just hit E.1, and now we have our base. So snapping was turned on. It was throwing some stuff off, but there we go. Fixed our issue. All right, then we have this section here, which we need to go down into the thing. But before we do that, I'm just going to grab all of these faces here. And so I'm just holding control and selecting. And there we go. We've got them all. And I'm just going to duplicate that real quick and leave it in place by right clicking and then hit P to separate that out by selection. So now I actually have uh, in my hierarchy, we can see that I have a treasure chest and we have the base cube. So if we go back to edit mode, we have the base cube here and then the lid. So I'm gonna call this chest remake and lid remake because I've already made these once. So, all right, there we go. Now the reason I duplicated it is so that it would actually have all of our edge loop markings so that when we go to make this top piece here, we don't have to remark any of those edge loops in order to get it. 
This is far too many edge loops and faces for this section, so we're going to end up cleaning that up in a minute. But for now, I'm just going to hide that, and we'll go back into edit mode on our chest. And so then all we have to do is extrude this down, and I'll just take it to right about there. So actually, you know what? We'll be specific, negative 0.5, and there we go. So now it looks like you can kind of store stuff in there. It looks, you know, you can put a texture to make sure everything is good. But let's get these extra raised out edges. So I'll grab these faces. And on this side as well. And we will extrude them using the extrude along normal so that I can extrude in both directions. Just click and drag and then do negative point one to get us that slight outcrop there. Uh, but there we go. And so actually, if I switch back to a non-weird shading, you can see now our base is basically a duplicate of this base. I think this is actually a little more shallow than this one, but for all intents and purposes, they're the same size. They look the same. If we put them up next to each other, they'd pretty much be the same model. So that's what we were shooting for. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and bring back the lid here. And we're going to, once again, uh, kind of grab all of the faces here. And I'm going to extrude up one. Now, the reason I'm extruding up one is if we look at the lid and pull up our viewport properties, we can see that it has a um, dimension of one on its z-axis. And so now our dimensions are the same. And then I'll just grab this entire edge loop and this entire edge loop. And we're going to bevel that out. So let's look at that from the right-hand side. And just hit Control-B to bevel that. And we will um, take that profile down. And you can see that some things have messed up a little bit here. So let's do this instead. Instead of beveling that, what I want to do is I just want to grab these edges real quick. These edges are what is throwing off the uh, bevel. So I'm going to go ahead and just dissolve these edges here and dissolve these. And I didn't dissolve the entire edge loop because if we rotate this on the uh, x-axis here, actually we'll need to do a little bit. Let's hide this and just look at this from the bottom then. I need this edge and this face to stay the same size so that it actually lines up with the top of the chest accurately. So now we can grab these and bevel them. And that's probably good. And then I'll just make that have one segment instead of two so we're not adding in an, another useless edge here. And then once again we'll grab all of the faces that we need. So we'll grab all of these. Oh, and it's selecting through the bottom, which is what I didn't want it to do, but makes sense. Um, and so now, we can just have it grab these, and then we'll extrude along normals one more time, 0.1, and change this to negative 0.1. And now that's the exact same size as our base. Life is good so far, so good. Um, well, all we have to do now is just move the pivot point so that it opens uh, basically on a hinge back here and make it look like there's some things on the inside. So I'm going to hide the chest one more time and we're going to put that little section on the inside as well. So let me grab the faces that we need. And we'll just extrude this up. And that should be good. And let's just do negative 0.3. Because I don't think 0.5 would let us do that accurately. And then we're going to go ahead and set the hinge. So the way that I'm going to set the hinge is I'm going to select both of the outer vertices that will, when we snap our cursor to select it, it will now be in the center point between these two vertices. Then I will right click, set origin, origin to 3D cursor bring back my chest and now if I were to rotate this on the x-axis it looks like the chest is actually opening and that these are the hinges right 
So basically, we've created a chest. We made uh, the lid, we made the base, we set the pivot points where we needed them to be, and these are almost identical. Now I think maybe these parts didn't come out as far, uh, or for, as far as these ones, but you guys get the basic idea. In the next video, I will show you how to texture this treasure chest, and then we'll go and do another video where we rig it up and animate it, and do an animation for opening. But those will be walkthroughs that come uh, a decent part in the future once I've got out the texturing and animation courses. If you enjoyed the walkthrough, give me that thumbs up. That would be super helpful. And also, if there's any object that you would like to see a walkthrough for, just put a comment on it, and I'll see what I can do to get that walkthrough created for you. I'm Sir Pinkbeard. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.